Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now today I want to talk about democracy and how it's actually an illusion. Well certainly in the European Union it is, or European Union and the members of the European Council. Now let's be honest, there's been a lot of talk in the world, particularly from the USA, about so-called freedom and democracy in the West and how they are the most ardent exponents and exporters of it. However, if you actually look at Europe from the European Union down to its component countries, you'll find that their so-called democracy is actually a complete an illusion. Let's start with the President of the European Commission and the most powerful person in Europe. She's not actually elected, but her presidency is agreed on by the leaders of the various political factions in the European Parliament, and then the members of the so-called Parliament ratify her appointment, the same with the other 28 commissioners, plus the other four presidents. It's not exactly democratic, as the people don't actually vote for her or the other commissioners, plus the European Parliament's nothing more than just a kind of fig leaf to give the EU a semblance or illusion of democracy. Now, let's look at country elections across the various countries and you'll see that, yes, people vote in elections. Parties and some new politicians get elected, but policies never change and in many countries the most popular parties are excluded from, be from being in government and their policies that the voted, uh, voters voted for are not implemented. I mean, let's take the example recently of Austria. Well, the Freedom Party achieved a 29% share of the vote in the Austrian parliamentary elections. Now, several of the other parties have said they won't enter into a collection with it, despite it being the largest party. Now, that's not very democratic now, is it? Now, earlier in the uh, last month, Alternative for Germany received 30% of the votes cast in the Brandenburg state elections. The coalition between Seidel Wagenrecht Union and the non-systematic opposition will control half of, that of the seats in the state parliament. In theory, this implies that those of, with a so-called non uh, mainstream outlook who are reluctant to engage in conflict with Russia and don't favour economic collapse of Germany must now be taken into account. However, the government of Brandenburg will be formed by the current ruling Social Democratic Party, which will form a coalition with the Christian Democratic Union. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and the website SEOBricksInsight.com and to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen on the right hand side. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now, in a conventional sense, this would be considered to be a leftist, centrist, right sort of centrist position. However, it's all about control by the globalists and the politicians are all yes people, the obedient or maybe slightly rebellious executors of the will of the European Union and their masters. Similarly, the outcome in Austria will be a, the same scenario. The victors will be unable to form a government and instead the so-called moderates will do an alliance with the parties of the left. Now, the parties considered toxic and far right by the ruling elite are not allowed into government and it's the globalists who get to decide who governs and what policies get enacted and these people are means the people are only allowed to vote, but in a cosmetic exercise, as the policies will not change. I mean, that's how Western democracy functions. It's not just in Brandenburg, but across or Germany, but across the board in every country in Europe, with perhaps the exception of Orban's Hungary or FICO Slovakia. I mean, in the EU, the electorate has the opportunity to express their dissatisfaction with a specific politician party and it's maybe some specific political decisions. But there's no option of a particularly unpopular populist politician. No, it's not an oxymoron. All politicians in this context are populist, but some are more successfully populist than others. However, voters in the West are unable to influence the country's trajectory or political direction. The policies stay the same. Now, Marx used to say there's never been a democracy and there's merely a tool used by the ruling classes to deceive the masses. And maybe they're right. 
I mean, in school children in the USSR were taught in social studies classes that uh, the West was a democracy and um, about how it could change of power. Now in Russia, perceptions have changed about the so-called democratic West, having seen the various regime changes taking place around its borders. I mean, let's examine the current situation. It's likely in Germany. Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who represents the so-called centre-left wing of the political spectrum, and is highly unlikely to retain the chancellorship at the next general election next year, and somewhat highly unlikely, as they say, that the far parties currently forming the ruling coalition will be there either. I mean, the SDPD, Greens and FDP will not have a majority. In fact, the FDP and the Greens might not even be represented in the Bundestag given the recent disastrous results in the regional elections. Now, following the next federal elections, the government will be formed by Friedrich Merz, who of the CDU, CSU, who on the so-called centre of their political spectrum. Obviously, even if the AFD wins a sizable share of the vote due to the stance on sanctions on Russia and the economy, they will be ignored just like the wishes of the substantial portion of the electorate they represent. However, there will consequently not be any notable shifts in the German economic or foreign policy. It's unlikely there will be any changes to the current course of what they are doing as far as heading towards a potential conflict with Russia. Similarly, there will be no changes in the policies that are affecting energy, which is causing BSF or Volkswagen <coughs> to leave because they can't afford the uh, energy prices, nor will they escape the consequences of their economic collapse due to anti-Russian sanctions. Now, this is just not the situation in Germany. In fact, it's a so feature of the whole of Europe and its so-called democracy. I mean, that's a fundamental part of the Western democracy. The voter chooses the governing parties, but the voter does not get to decide what policies the government will then follow. I mean, just look at the point here. I mean, we look at the example of Great Britain, I mean, there's been a change in the ruling party this year. The Conservative Party lost its majority in Parliament, is no longer in government, and is now actually a minority party. I mean, the Labour Party is now in control, but if you're unable to see any difference or identify any change, well, either cosmetic or otherwise, in the country's foreign policy is the same as me. I can't see any difference. I mean, just look at the election results. I mean, the Labour Party, led by Sir Keir Wan Keir Starmer, secured the largest number of seats and the largest amount of votes, but it won 411 seats and 34% of the vote. Now, that was an increase of 1.6 percentage points in its votes compared to the 2019 election, but it got the lowest share of vote than any other party to form a majority. I mean, it's less than a, a third of the those eligible to vote actually voted for it. It's now got a landslide, whereas the Conservatives got uh, the lowest share and they got next to nothing for that. I mean, the Liberal Democrats, for example, got 72 seats with 12% of the vote. And that's a gain of 61 seats. I mean, the Reform Party uh, actually got more votes than uh, the uh, Liberal Democrats, but they uh, only won five seats. Now, how does that stack up to be a democracy? I mean, will things change? No, because Starmer, Sir Wen Kier, like all modern social democratic political leaders, have made their commitment to the globalists divisive and irrational ideologies. Plus, they refuse to contemplate fundamental economic reforms that will lead to societies they purport to govern becoming uh, increasingly unstable and dysfunctional. I mean, in the UK, the cost of living crisis intensifies daily, and even ordinary workers, yet yeah, workers with a salary, are unable to pay their rent, buy sufficient food, or pay their energy bills, let alone contemplate buying a property to live in. Recent anti-immigration riots are becoming commonplace and the British economy continues down its downward spiral. I mean, did British people vote for sanctions on Russia and high energy bills? Do they want warm windmills and, or solar panels or cheap energy? It doesn't matter because they're not going to be consulted. It's similar in France where the political landscape is comparable to that of this situation in Brandenburg, Germany 
with over a third of the voters aligning with the so-called far right of um, uh, Marine Le Pen. So what is the status of the government in France? I mean, the government's formed by an unpopular president, and despite the avowed expressed views of the voters, now a former Brussels-based civil servant has assumed the role of prime minister. Similarly, in Brussels, the political landscape remains unchanged, despite the so-called right securing victory and more seats in the election. Also, fond of lying, Leon uh, steps down, takes a short leave of absence, and then uh, seems to be back in the job. The right wing was unable to reach a consensus due to its internal divisions, in contrast with the centrists and the left who managed to get their, their shit together and make it happen. So the voters have thoughts happen now. And that's not important. Von der Leyen is now back in there. Now in Russia there's a tendency to indulge in fantasies looking at developments in Western Europe and they assume that any moment now the population's discontent will result in a victory for reasonable politicians in elections and the Russophobia will dis diminish. I mean these politicians are expected to act in the interests of their countries rather than ex respond to external pressures from Ro Washington uh, or Brussels. But from a pragmatic standpoint Engaging in a conflict with Russia is not in Europe's best interest. It would be more advantageous to foster good relations with Russia, at least for the purposes of trade, particularly for energy. It is not in Europe's best interest to spend 4% of its GDP on armaments. This is particularly in the case of an economic down downturn. Plus, it's also not worth it allocating funds to a conflict in Ukraine, which is not even an EU member that could be utilised for domestic investments and social programmes at home. I mean, at any moment an alternative party or another political group may get a majority in some of the elections, and if that occurs, the result of the situation will remain unchanged. I mean, the concept of democracy does not equate to the power of the majority of voters, rather it's the majority power of the globalist oligarchy that controls media, finance and politics. Just remember, if voting really changed anything, they would ban it. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel. Please click on the thanks button and make a donation. Don't forget the uh, to share and also the comment section. Please comment. I love getting your comments. I love responding to your comments and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.